arrive on platform 3 goes to first stop Warnervale, then all stations to Broad Meadow, then Hi, I'm Jamie Loda, Director of Water and Sewer for Central Coast Council. Council is responsible for supplying water to a population of over 340,000 people and has the third largest urban water supply system in New South Wales. As one of the fastest growing areas in the state, our population is projected to grow to around 415,000 by 2036. This means we need to start planning now for a significant increase in residential and commercial demand for water and sewer services. The Marty to Warnervale pipeline is key to securing the future water needs of our community. It will service expansion in the major northern growth corridor, including Warnervale Town Centre and surrounding Greenfield subdivision sites. It will also enhance bulk water transfers between ourselves and the Hunter region, enabling better planning for future water resourcing and helping both regions better manage potential future drought conditions. In 2020, Council engaged Speckerpag Seymour White Joint Venture to deliver this $61 million pipeline, which stretches over nine kilometres from the Marty Water Treatment Plant through to Sparks Road at Warnervale. Our key focus areas throughout the project were the community, the environment, construction technology, and safety of our workforce. During the initial planning stages of the project, it was identified that there would be some residents who were living close to the construction corridor that would be affected by construction activities. The project team took proactive measures to uh, keep the community informed uh, and this was done by uh, a regular update letter drop to which uh, some 4,000 letters have been distributed to those people that uh, are living within close proximity of their construction corridor. We also had a 1800 number which was supplied on the letter so people could contact us uh, readily if they needed to. These proactive measures assisted to help the relationship between the community and the project team. Central Coast is um, host to a vast array of wildlife in sensitive environmental areas. To undertake this rather large project, we needed to understand the wildlife and the sensitive environmental areas that we were likely to impact. The key to the project was to get some terrific uh, baseline environmental information which will allow us to give us some key points on how to deal with these better. Any hollow trees that we remove, we replace those hollows in trees and we've got now 42 hollows put up in the, in the local area. The JV scope included construction of not only 8.9 kilometres long of pipeline but also end of line valve facilities and connecting into the existing Central Coast Water Infrastructure Network. We engaged an Australian-based pipe manufacturing company to supply the mainline pipe. The pipes were transported and unloaded along the pipe corridor. Once on site, they were welded into pipe strings and lifted into the trench using escalators. Air valves, scale valves and isolation valves were installed in strategic locations to allow the pipeline to be easily maintained in the future and also for future networks to connect in. As a 100-year design life was required for this project, the primary pipe nominated was a 1 metre diameter high-density polyurethane or HCP pipe, which is able to withstand the soil types encountered in this region, predominantly made up of acid sulphate soils. We nominated to use PE100 H112 HCP pipe. This type of pipe and resin composition allowed the pipe wall to be thinner and pipe lengths lighter without compromising the pressure rating. The pipes were joined using high pressure polyfusion welding, which consists of cleaning and shaving pipe ends, heating the exposed pipe wall face to 215 degrees, and then by the use of hydraulic rams, push the two pipe faces together. This fuses the pipes and the result is a strong bond. The pipeline route posed several physical obstacles, including coastal wetland, 
the M1 motorway, Wyong River and Deep Creek. The project engaged a specialist, horizontal directional drilling contractor for these complex crossings. By using these technologies, we were able to drill between two locations and pull the pipeline through. This limited disturbance on natural habitats and the fragile ecosystem of the Central Coast. The project also used uh, thrust boring technologies which encompassed uh, sinking two concrete shafts either side of Deep Creek and horizontally drilling between the two. This eliminated excavation through the creek and any impacts on the environment in the area. Some of the challenges were, number one, the, the challenges of logistics and getting materials to the site, uh, and the other was actually planning the, all the work in amongst uh, the, the pipeline route and only have 14 access points to the site. That was very crucial in, in achieving the schedule that was required to, to, to get the job done on time. So uh, they, the Sebeka Back Seymour White did very well in achieving that. Some of the challenges that we encountered on this project were uh, existing services to deal with, uh, the residential roads and residential properties. Uh, another key challenge was the cut into the existing network as we had to make sure that we didn't uh, disrupt the community's water supply. The project applied the avoid, minimise, mitigate approach to reducing the environmental impacts, particularly on local diversity values. A vegetation management plan was developed from the outset of the project. This document aligned with our requirements and assigned safeguards to minimise environmental impacts. This framework was later applied to the management of the reinstatement of the pipeline corridor post-construction. As a result of the management plan, the project planted approximately 25,000 local province plants consisting of 11,000 trees and 14,000 shrubs. The alignment route also required working near existing waterways. Ecologists were engaged to relocate over 100 eels and five turtles as a result of working in these areas. Throughout the life of the project, we engaged over 300 local personnel that were engaged to carry out the works on site. By using a mature safety system and processes, we were able to create a safety culture where the attitudes and values of the business were understood at all levels. The works included a few high-risk activities, such as confined space entry when performing internal de-beading of the pipe, or working in shoring boxes when working in compromised soil conditions. Through a practical risk management process, we were able to ensure that our workers went home at the end of each shift, injury-free every day. I'm really proud of our project delivery team in partnership with Specker Pag Seymour White Joint Venture and I'm confident it will ensure a safe and secure water supply for the Central Coast for years to come.